if you could give five tips to everybody that's going to be tuning in watching this video, which is in excess of 25,000 people. So well, you did is, tell me that before you started. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what five tips would you offer uh, these viewers for property development and site management as well? Okay, at what stage would they be at in their journey? Let's look at it from various different stages, from start, maybe middle, and at the end. Okay, uh, so start. I'd say the first bit of advice, I'll try and break this up into five, then I'll do two for a start. So number one, if you start, I'd say start small, but with big ambition. So it's like the micro uh, patience, or, well, sorry, the micro impatience and the macro patience. So you've got to have a bigger picture viewing of what you want to achieve, but you've got to start small. Um, the reason for that is it mitigates your risk if you did uh, make a mistake at any point those losses are very small so it's not going to stop you from starting again the second piece of advice I would say is surround yourself with a very good team and more importantly a mentor that you can actually bounce ideas off someone that's trodden the path that you want to go so they've already done it they've got the pitfalls that you could avoid and you can actually learn on someone else's time um, so what I'd also say is the third thing I would do is say that's a bit of advice. Do your numbers. Most people just uh, have got a vision, and because they're so uh, passionate about it, sometimes you, you're the easiest person to kid yourself, and I've done it myself. So you can't, you've got to go in with this with a realistic view of doing your costings, getting someone more experienced than you to go over your costings, and then add on 20% anyway. If the project still works at that, then crack on with it. Somebody in the mid part of their business. Is this number four? We'll go for number four. So there's someone in the mid part of the business where you're wanting to take a step up of growth of where they started from to then take the next step is what we did. Uh, because I wanted to grow significantly, I went out to the market, looked at using other people's money to complement my own. And it's a case of talking with the investors that I've got. And the Northwest has got a lot of um, high net worth individuals that people don't know about. And people don't like cash sat there doing nothing. So if you've got a good product and you're a good person and you've got genuine intent, there are people there that want to actively invest. So if you can get great products, give them a good return, you can actually raise 500 grand, a million quid, easier than sometimes you can 40 or 50 grand, genuinely. Um, so my advice on that stage would be to think big, but then use other people's money in a good way, look after them, um, and use that uh, connection that you've got with them as a bit of a mentor program as well. So fifth and final one is, and you asked at the beginning, someone at the end of the journey, I can't advise on the end of the journey because I can't, uh, I don't think there is an end goal really. Like if you would, uh, well here's the bit of advice then, is enjoy it. And that's actually one of the most important things that I got told and is, I, I will make a decision on which projects we take on. First and foremost, is it safe? Is it financially viable? But then do I want to do it? And is it going to bring joy to my life, my team's life? Is it going to be a good place to work? Is it got a good location? Are we going to enjoy the process? And if the answer to that is yes, then everything else falls into place. Because when you enjoy what you do, the amount of crap that comes with any business, no matter what industry you're in, it's far easier to tackle when you enjoy it and you've got like a, a bigger um, reason and purpose for doing it. So yeah, that'll, that'll be my five tips. Oh,